We're back. It's been a long time since we've done one of these. It's moved on from SO6 to SO7. We've picked up a fourth musketeer. One of the original three musketeers is late, as per usual. Busy doing something, no doubt. Looking for the Queen or eating his dinner. Welcome back, Stu. Hello, Martin. Good to be back. It is. And what have you been up to, then, for the last year or so? Uh, oh, as usual, you know me, don't try to do too much. Sleep, eat, sleep some more. That's about it. That sounds about right. And we've got a new a new member of the team this year as well. I don't think he's that new, is he? I think he was around years ago as well, before my time even. Welcome, Nick. How are we doing? How are you going, Martin? I'm all right, thank you. So how are you finding the differences between it now for what it was like last time you were around? Uh, it's not much. It's, it's been a good season, I'll say. There's, there's been plenty of, um, shall we say miscreants running around the, the league in previous years over the past 12 to whatever years it's been but it's been a very good year this year there's, there's a lot of, lot of good faces around the forum and it's good to see it's been good we had a little bit of a problem a couple of years ago but it all got sorted out in the end everything hopefully is good now so Doug's going to join in as and when he he can get in I don't know whether he's sort of like not been allowed in because he's not got the right hat on or something but we'll be uh, having a look at things like that later so shall, shall we get stuck in and have a look at these races and see what we think's what why not let's crack on Right, so we open the meeting, as ever, with the Queen Anne over a mile for four-year-olds and upwards. What do you like to look of there, Stu? Well, it's actually, I mean, to be honest with you, not very, uh, they're not particularly classy horses in there. Um, I mean, the top rating's 125. I've not uh, taken so much, um, what would we say, I've not been keeping my eyes so much on the flat as I normally would. I've been spending my time much more on the hunt. So really looking at that race, I'm going to go for a couple of newbies down the bottom, the two down the bottom, and Kabushim posted for my mate Steve Rahn, and uh, <laughs> All the war for Leon Van Rensburg, which I don't think is going to win with a nine-year-old. So I'll go Kabushin posted to win it and all the war to come second. Um, what about you, Nick? Um, Rampage Town for me. Uh, it's, it's the best horse in the race. Three-time group winner. Trumps the form of anything else in the race. Only defeat was when it was giving a weight away at Epsom and in Australia when it was putting hard early. Can't see it beat. Uh, Zuby Dawn and Lamego will set the race up nicely for Rampage down, I believe. Yeah, I think you're probably right. I think I probably don't need to say a lot really there because I think you've probably said it all between the two of you. The new ones might be interesting, but um, I think that uh, that top one of Leon's is gonna is gonna win it. Now we're gonna have to watch it here, you know, because it sounds like Nick knows what he's talking about. We're gonna have to be a bit more um, clued up. Yeah, no, you're you're right on the ball there, Nick. You're gonna show us up, mate. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a professional, so here's my, my job in real life. So I'd like to hope I'm on the pop. <laughs> Right, OK, so let's, okay. Move, let's move on to race number two, which is the first of the sprints. That's the King Stand. And what do you like this time, Nick? You've got one in this. Have you got any chance? Yeah, hopefully. Um, my sprinters are normally rubbish, so it's a nice surprise. Um, unfortunately, I think the ground's against good old Swift Rumble. I'm going to go with Park Royal. It's an obvious obvious pick. Two-time Group 1 winner. Class in the race again. There's plenty of chances there. Gray's very intricately named, so I'm not going to say it. Mm. And Hood Sickle's also got a good chance. Yeah, we need to try and find out where he got that name from because um, it's a bit weird. <laughs> How did it get through the BHA? That's all I want to know. Well, it's, it's not as bad as one that Derek Hinton had a few years ago that we actually had a little meeting about and refused to commentate on it and we just called it um, <laughs> Derek's Horse. We <laughs> said we're not saying that. Uh, left. It was that bad. I'm not even going to tell you what it is. Yeah, I'm sorry. You want to me? No, my memory's gone. I can't remember where that was called, but I remember we didn't like to comment on it. No, it was pretty um, bad. Uh, everything Nick said. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, looking at obviously the field and uh, my lack of flat knowledge, um, Park Royal. I mean, James Shea's got Sadi Fire, Svetlana, so you're never too sure with them bringing in uh, new new horses. But looking at Paul's three year olds and his good success so far this season, I imagine Park Royal will take it fairly comfortably. Yeah, I think so. It's pretty boring. It's going to be boring if we all keep tipping the same one, but I'm going to think I'll tip that in the tipping competition. So I'll. Better stick with it. Although I've got my first ex my experiment in this because I've got a new horse in this that's an eight-year-old, and Leon said the eight, the um, older horses are better, and this thing's supposed to be a chaser. So I stuck it in a trial with the sprinters and beat all my sprinters by a mile. So I've just thrown it in and see what happens. But I don't think it'll be any good. You're unlikely yeah. to win a Group One. Oh, Scott Martin. I don't think so, but there, was no, there wasn't anywhere else to put it, to be honest, today. Yeah, looking at this race as well, Paul Rhodes has got a good record in this. If you look back through the years, he won it, he's won it on oh, no, two or three of the, last, of the last four or five seasons, so he won it as well in this. So I think we've all gone for the same one there, haven't we? The St. James's Palace Stakes is next. That's for three-year-old Colts, and I think this is your first commentary of the week, Nick. Florida Dan, I'm 
I'm sorry, it, it's Tajikistan for me. Um, it's it's pretty straightforward for him. He'll beat a Kranji, but that looks like a strange result to me. It's dual classic one. Um, there's not much else I can see. But where I play for, this integration will stay on late. But I think it's one for Tajikistan and Paul Rose again. Yeah, what about you, Stu? Well, unfortunately, I'm going to go the same way as well. Yeah, I mean, I think Paul's going to double up here. He's going to take two of the first three races of the day. Um, again, these three-year-olds are, appear to be a cut above everybody else. And again, the only new horse coming in there is a James Shea horse, which, like we say, we're not too sure, you know, what it could be. Um, but now I think Paul's going to follow up again. I mean, yeah, Leon's obviously going to be around there with disintegration. Um, says doesn't like the firm ground. I think it will favour horses that us prefer the firmer ground today um, but generally I think you know it's another win for Paul Rhodes mm, possibly but I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go for Leon's horse because I like the way that, that finishes like a rocket and it was um, it was unlucky I think in um, a race not too long ago I think, I think it won I think it won the Craven didn't it really well so I quite fancy that but I'm, this is my first gripe of the day because you know I like to moan why are we still not running this on the round course this is still being run on the straight course and it should be run on the round course that what that's what makes it different to the to the guineas and they wanted it on the straight course again. Well we'll let you choose next for the commentary stakes, which is for the two year olds. Is that right? Well commentary's where I come from, so that's why I'm commentating on this race. This one. It's gonna be your mate Steve Rahn, would you like to call him? I think he's probably gonna do well with this. With Lapu Maggie. Okay. Well I'll go next. We'll leave Nick to pick up the pieces. I think Dan Thompson's River de Sella will take this. There's, again, there's not a lot in here, although it acts on firmish ground, and I really do believe good to firm tends to learn to lean towards the firmer horses. And it's only other previous win was the first time out and a maiden also on firm ground. I know it's only good to firm today, but I have a sneaky feeling that uh, Mr. Thompson is going to pick up the commentary stakes. Mm. Yourself, Nick? Uh, I'm with you there. One of my favourite horses to commentate on, Rib at the cellar. I think I think you're right on the firm ground. Um, I'm fortunate not to finish closer in the woodcoat. Um, Tungo has got a good chance on the second in the slipper. I think Lappy, Lappy Maggie's probably got, might have to carry that penalty, which is going to struggle. My one's all right, but the ground won't suit. Um, River de Sella for me. Okay, interesting to look. There's on Darren Thompson won this last season as well, so maybe you spotted that, Stu, when you decided to go for it. So. I only come second before, but um, I suppose it's difficult this year to, to try and use SO6 and SO7, I think, because I think everything's considerably different with uh, the horses, without doubt, whatever Mark did with the, the system. But who you knows? We'll see. Mm-hmm. Still no sign of Doug, and this is the um, this next race is the first one Doug's commentating, and he's really going to moan at me for giving him this because it's a two and a half miler with five runners. Nasty. <laughs> well, me and Nick have both got one in it, so I thought, well, well, who's going for this? Because this is probably not going to be too difficult to pick a winner out of five. Well, we should be able to get this right. Well, I'm, this is the, this is the, probably the only chance I've got of a winner all week, I think. But I'm not so sure that mine will quite stay in a two and a half mile. But it might not need to, looking at some of the others. Yeah, and it's, I mean, it's running off a, a, a pretty decent handicap, let's be honest. Mm. It, won off, it won off 59 over, what, two, two miles two, running yeah. on. I think you've got every chance. Yeah, it's the best chance I've got for a win, but it doesn't stay two and a half miles. So if anything in there really does, it's going to beat me. I'm sorry, but I believe I have this race sewn up. I cannot have Dutch forward beat. <laughs> uh, I, I love the staying races. Uh, I, I've... I've won the Ascot Gold Cup twice previously, and I thought this horse was good enough for it. And on, if you go back to his maiden run, so he's currently rated 60. He was fourth in his maiden over 18. The horses he finished behind were are now rated 116, 115, and 105. And Dutch forward is now rated 60. Fiddler's Adage, whose uh, top weight for this was three or four lengths behind him on that one as well. Dutch forward now gets £20 from Fiddler's Adage. Again, lucky Rebecca, I think it's the only one Dutch forward hasn't run against. I mean, the bottom two can't be discounted. They, if, they think one's won, one's come second, but I can't. Act. Like, I'll, I'll give up if it can't win. It's gone. <laughs> like, I, it, it, like, it's got £5 swing on monthly cred, £10 swing on Frosty Saga, £20 swing on Fiddler's Adage from that maiden run. I do all my trial, all of my trials are at Ascot without anything else. Uh, I I can't have not the ground, Nick. You're not concerned about the ground? Slightly. Slight, that's the only concern I have. Um, but, I mean, it's, it just batters everything I have at home on over two mile four at Ascot on any sort of ground. And it's been, I don't know what the jockeys have been up to. The last two races, Dutch forward and 17 star, have been left out the back and staying on over two mile five. So maybe I should have stuck them in over the hunt. But mm. who knows? I'm hoping anyway. 
Oh, well, cheers for that, Nick. That's the only chance I thought I had of a winner completely going now. You said that, so that's my best well, chance of a second. Well, I think got one later on, so. <laughs> well, let's hope one of us wins it anyway. Not that we don't want Gray or Addicts or Fingers Chelsea, crossed. We? It would be nice to get a to get a win for the Coventry team. I think the last few se- I've had at least one Royal Ascot winner every season so far, but I really don't know where it's coming from this year. The big difference for me with this six and seven is my flat horses are useless, but the jumpers seem to, seem to be going okay. All right, next. Up, it's another two-year-old race. It's the Windsor Castle, five furlongs this time, but it's a 0 to 90 handicap in SO7 land. Okay, well, a tricky little race. Um, you know, nobody's really. We've got a couple of bottom weights there. Probably not good enough. Um, I'm actually going for the duck eggs all round, and just purely because I like the name of it, and I wish. Our good mate Bill Hinton all the best. So I'm going to go for Brass Monkey and purely for its name. What about you, Nick? Um, I'm not going to say it, but I think Josh Sutherland has this wrapped up. Um, calmly F down. Mm. Uh, it's consistent, very consistent over uh, 0 to 100 and 0 to 90 class. Um, drops down to try furlongs. We all know his horses go out like rockets and are tough to beat. So I think over five would be the perfect trip for it. So I think. Uh, calm the F down will win uh, fed up bird and mine all off the ground I think Chocolate Pine will run a good race Tarifa will also go close as well yeah that's what I'm going, that's what I'm going for Tarifa I think Darren Thompson Jersey Stakes seven furlongs it's for all age horses in this uh, not just three year olds one or two decent looking sorts in there what do you think Nick again another wide open race um, it's very interesting that Steve Rowe has left Mutalek out and it's only run once so far um, he was second in the spring cup I believe uh, it's big weight big weight sorry but the horse could be really classy and, and have got a good chance yeah it could be I've noticed oh. when I've been commentating on, on his horses a lot of them look like they're coming to win and then they just hit the wall don't they in the last sort of half furlong a lot of the time so so that, that would be the only thing that would worry me about about, about that one and I am going to go for Josh favourable verdict. I don't know why. I just think it looks far too far down the um, down the card. All of it, and it might um, it might do all right. Yeah, no, a tricky race for me. I mean, as I said, not been watching a great deal of the, the flat this year. I suppose you'd have to look up towards the top end of the handicap but again going on my idea that I like horses that like a little bit firm ground looking at Arrowheads right down the bottom maybe it's a bit of an each way shot this Daniel French's horse one last time out I admittedly it was only a 0 to 70 um, but one by a good couple of lengths if I'm not mistaken on firm ground so I think just as a sneaky outsider I'm going to just pump for Arrowhead it's a stew mm, I suppose this is the sort of race where you should get a, a surprise winner and one of the one of the smaller trainers might just pick it up well that's remar- well it doesn't appear to be remarkable I mean Bavarian Nimbus for Derek Hinton a couple of good looks like reasonable places but again running in I mean it come from, what was it 5th and 0110 you know probably mm. there or thereabouts around the weights you know I think it's one of those races where it will go to one of the smaller trainers a good chance of it so next up then we've got the the Prince of Wales which has got a massive field endless nights will win this <laughs> <laughs> Go on, Nick, what do you think? I agree. It's a free horse race, endless nights, and cost her about and dancing goddess. I mean, endless nights, a four time group one winner. I'm, well, a four time group winner. I'm beating over 10 furlongs in the class act. It's as simple as that, I think. Yeah. Well, I'm going to go for a new beat because I think, uh, you know, certain big trainers will certainly have put it. Uh, probably got a few, fair few lengths on some of the starting stables and I'm going to go for Darren Thompson's massive iron to surprise everyone right on to race number 9 then that's the Royal Hunt Cup and Doug's doing, Doug's doing this one so uh, he's got a few runners to deal with well, I'm sure he'll enjoy it what do you like the look of this time Stu? Um, again I mean there's no, there's, no, there's no real shining stars here um, you would favour the 3 year olds towards the bottom carrying a lot less weight a few winners, Emma. Well, you've got your all I want to do. What did that run off last week? Nine, ten. <laughs> Something like that. Yeah. <laughs> a winner. I suppose you've really got to look at Django's horse. 
keep calm. I mean, off 107. I mean, its previous wins, obviously, one it's made and won a group one, group one, one handy, uh, a group one handicap of 110. So probably, yeah, I'll go for Django. So I think it's probably the class one in the, in the field. Nick. Yeah, yeah, I'm with Django's. Um, keep calm. I believe is the one of his that will win. Um, just edited it through to the ground. Already won a Group One handicap. Fifth in the Kentucky Derby is pretty standout form. Uh, even off 107, it's probably got a good chance. Maps cross with Darren Thompson is also interesting. How that horse is rated 95 after being a Grade One winner, I'll never know. Um, but the ground will go against that one. Keska Canto Canella and daughter of Dante also have outside chances. Okay, well that's pretty straightforward then because I think Django will win this as well. He's pretty good at these races up to about a mile. He's not. He doesn't tend to do too much. In the longer distance races, but he's good at the short ones, sprints and the miles, so I think he's um, probably going to win that one. The Queen Mary is next. This is for two year old fillies, small field. Do you fancy yours in this, Nick? I do actually. I don't, I don't think um, he'll win, but I mean, I think it's pretty straightforward. Olympic Dreams, it's an absolute dross race. You know, only one horse rated over 112 in a group two. Might have run all right. The, the ground will suit, loves Ascot got every chance but Olympic Dreams will be far better than anything else in the race yeah well, apart maybe from Velma Tiplin because Velma Tiplin's running twice so she gets two goes at it so I presume that's, <laughs> presume that's a mistake hopefully it doesn't run twice yeah it's Olympic Dreams will win this I think yeah unfortunately I think it's going to be uh, a trio for Olympic Dreams as Nick has pointed out I mean it's I can't bother the rest to looking at his rating and such like I mean my kind of magic you never know with Josh um, although his flat team haven't performed particularly well this year but he would have spent a lot of time trying to get five new flat horses to at least uh, be challenging for good races which he hasn't had much of this season so no I've got the Olympic dreams but my kind the magic might just surprise you, never know. Okay, looks like that's another one where all three of us going for the same one men. On to race 11, the Sandringham Handicap. This is your third call of the day on day one, Nick. So what do you like? Um, it's quite an interesting race, actually. There's quite a few with a chance. Um, Sahid, Steve Rowe, is probably my pick. Uh, fifth in a solid 0 to 110 last week and second in the maiden's pretty good form. Nimrod goes close, also has some good form. My one's all right. I think the weight's probably going to be too much, but it's the perfect trip, course, and ground. Outflank, and I also think yours, Heart RD, Les, might run a good race as well. Yeah, it's got a little bit of a... A little bit of a little bit, bit of a chance. It's, I'm going to go for a bit of a bit of a long shot, I think, because I'm going to go for out flank for Daniel French. And he's quietly having a good season, Daniel French. I think he's missed a couple of years, and he's been he's back there. He's doing all right. This is the sort of race I think he could pick up. Yeah, no, he's probably got an opportunity. It's difficult here. I mean, if we look at uh, what's going on the last two seasons, I mean, Derek Hinton's won it both season eight and season nine. Mm. So maybe setting up another little plot here with Consa problem what to hub. I don't know where these people get these names from. Um, I mean yeah, come second in an order sixty five last time out, you know, this, this is probably well, well out of its uh, out of its range, but you never know. But uh, I'll stick in the camp for Dale's horse comes problem here, Farby, or whatever it's called. Okay, that's it. and the final race of day one is the Norfolk. It's another two-year-old race over five furlongs. What do you like this time? Okay, well, uh, right, Norf Norfolk Stakes. Yeah. Mm, okay, so uh, Group Two, you got a couple. I tell you, the two that always scare me whenever you see a John Morgan horse appearing, both two-year-olds and anything over two mile four furlongs. <laughs> he tends to have some very, very good horses. Obviously, doesn't enter every race going. He will just pick his races. I imagine that they've both got a chance, one-on-one -on -one and collateral portrait. But looking through the rest of the world, Darren Thompson's got some good form. Sagamore and the, the, the Chase, David Robertson, I mean, his previous two wins were a group or a listed win. 110, but now I stick my neck out with a John Morgan horse. One on one, I'll go for. Yeah, it's just a case of picking which one you think is the best one of the two because we haven't got a clue at the minute, isn't it? But he's, he's there or thereabouts, isn't he? I'll just like, look at the top one though. It's third, first, second. It's had one dodgy run, but you can, you can forgive him. One dodgy run, can't you? And that was in that uh, Group One Golden Slipper thing, so it could have could have had a bad draw or something in that or whatever. So yeah, I'm going to go for that one. Well, I've just written down John Morgan. I don't know which one wins, but it's just John Morgan. So <laughs> I've got no idea really. But as you said, his two yards different class, so I, 
I think one of them will win. Quiros is pretty consistent, will go well, and as you said, Sagamore and Dotche is unbeaten over five furlong will probably run well, but it's uh, one for John Morgan. I'm not sure which one. I'll probably go with the other one. Um, which one of you one on one? I'll go with collateral portrait. Yeah, and if you look at it, John Morgan's won this race three of the last four seasons as well, so it's probably he's a fairly safe bet that he's probably going to take it, but I'm not changing my mind. I'll stick with the top one. Are you challenging, Nick? Are you going to challenge John Morgan over his long distance runners? Is... No. <laughs> <laughs> Just so I'd ask. <laughs> I simply know. Well, as you can probably tell, we were having one or two technical issues with some of those calls there. And also the lack of Doug. Doug had disappeared for his dinner. Doug will appear on day two. But here's a bit of a insight into what can go wrong when we're recording these little conversations on the telephone. I can hear you. Oh, I can't hear anybody. Hello. 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 Right, I'll take the register. Stu. Hello. Hello. <laughs> you know, with us now. No, no crocodile, Dundee. Can anybody hear anything? Hello. I can hear. I can hear Doug. Can anybody hear me? Yes. Yeah, we can hear. Him. Right, Stu. Yes. Nick. He said Nick. But did he? Sorry, I didn't hear him. <laughs> Joey's gone. Are you still there, Doug? Yeah, I'm here. Okay. This has been a, this has been a nightmare because I don't think my phone's working properly and it's not picking. Nobody can hear me. So. It's not. Um, oh, no, they can hear you. They can hear you. They couldn't before. I don't know whether they can now. Okay. Well, while you're all listening to that, Stu's made his way down to the course and he's going to give us a quick look at the final look at the going and the weather and see what it's all going to be like a little bit later on. Last minute insight from Stu. Okay, so you join me down here on the course as I take a little look at uh, the conditions. The going is uh, good to firm by the stewards here, although they are still watering the downhill towards Swinley Bottom. It's uh, a nice brisk day here. The sun is shining. It certainly is going to be rather hot. But as we get down to Swinley Bottom, the ground here is fairly firm. I think they would like it to be uh, better to good, but I think you'll find it's more firm. I'm now going to take a wander up to the home straight. The uphill towards the finishing line. Sort of centre of the course. There's, it's fairly firm still. As you move out towards the rail, you see where the water is draining away. It seems to a little bit of cut, a little bit of better ground. The weather forecast for this evening is um, some rain, which will help the stewards here, and we may have better conditions tomorrow. So good luck to everybody. I hope you've got some horses that like the firm ground, because I think it will be that pretty much throughout the day. There's a cool breeze coming in as well, which will still dry out the ground even a little bit further as we go through the day's racing. But I'll hand you back to the studio and hope you get some winners. So, we heard from the supposed experts earlier, that's uh, Nick and Stu and me and Doug. And now we're going to take a little bit of a wander and we're going to go into the one of the ladies-only bars in um, Alaska. And they've let me in. I don't know why, I don't know what that says about me, but they've actually let me in to do this. And so I'm going to go in there and we're going to meet up with um, Lady Sharon of Bootle and her friends. And they're going to tell us what they fancy on day one. Hello, Lady Sharon of Bootle. How are you today? Hiya Martin, how are you? I'm good, thanks. I've got my beer all lined up, ready for the day. It's nice to see that the uh, Royal Ascot meeting is for everybody in the south, the north, the east, the west, everywhere, and you're not worried at all about anything like that. You're fitting in nicely with all these other people and everything. I am, I've got my heels on. And you've got plenty of mates here with you? I've got I've got my mate here from Lawford, Katrina. Say hello, Katrina. Hello, how are you? Well, that's good to see. So have you better have a look at the form then? So what do you have a look, look of in the first race? It's the Queen Anne State. Um, my, I found Fancy um, Sulu Dawn, solid form in top company, and um, somebody has to. <laughs> well, yep, yeah, somebody's got a fancy. I suppose I can't remember what the rest of us went for. I'm feeling that most of us probably went for a rampage camp, but I can't really remember. The second race is a sprint, that's the King's Stand. What about that one? 
Um, well, it's a funny name, this one, but it does tickle my fancy. It's called Smack the Fanny, and um, I like the sound of this one. Oh, please, can't take her anywhere. Oh, right, OK. So is that a little bit of a, a little bit of a discussion in the ladies' camp there that you couldn't quite make your mind about yeah, that one? Yeah, Katrina, she's such a snob. Well, you'll have she, to... She does like a good drink. You'll have to tell Katrina if she's worried about saying that name to the bookies, she'll have to go to the tote, and you can bet on it by the numbers on that. You just say number three or number whatever it is. But, yeah, so that's that's what... what tell us again what you going for smack the fanny all right okay well, i say that so what have we got in the next race well i asked my friend katrina what she thought because i thought you know because i've picked most of them she's a bit shy you know so she says she likes a pint of class so uh, we might get a glass pint oh, oh, okay pint of class that's probably got a bit of a bit of a chance pint of class is that a pint of prosecco or a pint of champagne or a pint of guinness well i i'll have a glass of beer oh. but um katrina probably have a bit of what do you want uh, prosecco please a bit like Doug, really. Doug's into all that stuff. You'd think he's the Australian bloke that does the commentating with us. You heard him, Doug. Yeah, I like him. He's fun. He is fun, but he's a bit posh. He's not like your real Australian. He's got no corks on his hat. He's got... Oh, he'd be all right with Katrina and the Prosecco, then. Yeah, you better stick with me, then you'll be all right. What about the next race? The next one is um, Told the Bell. The Bells kind of thing, you know what I mean? I don't is that because Bells is whiskey? Is that why you picked that one? Yeah, well, that's one of yours, Martin, isn't it? Is it? <laughs> I don't think it is, but anyway. Bells whiskey, that. <laughs> Bells whiskey's not that good, but it's better than water, I suppose. And what about the race after that? Uh, the fifth race is um, Lucky Rebecca, but Rebecca's gone. We haven't seen her since, sort of, like, the last three hours. I think she's on the floor somewhere. <laughs> Well, that might be because the lovely Rebecca's maybe not that lovely after all, but that is one of mine actually. So um, hopefully she'll do she'll do well. But um, I'm quite pleased you've picked one of mine, and uh, maybe Lady Rebecca will turn up later. No, oh, don't hold out for her. <laughs> and what have we got after that? We've got the sixth one now. We got Tarifa, and she won last time out, so. I think that she's got another chance there. Yeah. She sounds good. I like that name as well. You know, I like, do go by names. I know. Yeah, like Reefa like reminded you of drugs and things. Like no, yeah, I had a Reefa. Don't know. No, I didn't. Katrina, put them back. Okay. All right. And race number seven. It's Sayonara. Goodbye. Yeah, we might lose his maiden certificate if he's lucky. Yeah. Um, say, good, say goodbye to his maiden yeah, certificate. Goodbye. And goodbye to old uh, Rebecca. <laughs> Hopefully, we get it back later. Okay. That, that, that will be good. So Sayonara in that one then. And um, what have we got next? And the next one is all. Always dreaming, just like me. I'm always dreaming. And, Can't and help it. What is it, Katrina? You're, what is it you're always dreaming of? Anything in particular, or do we really not want to know? Well, I'm hoping that I'm always going to be like a Katrina one day. You know, be posh like. Well, you have to go to electrocution lessons <laughs> or something. What are they called? Or electrocution <laughs> lessons, elocution lessons. I don't know, Katrina. What do you say? The, the um. Oh, is that the... She's, she's gone. She's, she's giving me a funny faces now. That's what she can't say. The rain in Spain falls mainly on the plane. Can you do that? Stu was good at that because he used to live in Spain. He doesn't now. He lives in Ramsgate or Romford. <laughs> Or run oh, or is it? Yeah, it's lovely. Mm. I've been there. House prices have probably gone down since Stu got there, but he's probably still out there. <laughs> so, what have we got left next? Um, the next one is the post girl world. Post girl world? Yeah. Okay, that's like a world where there's no girls left. That's a bit of a strange name for all, so, isn't it? Yeah, I like the name. Or is it about post ladies, do you think? Possibly. You think the train is a post lady. I think that might be Nick's. Nick's. Maybe, maybe Nick's got a thing about post women. Oh. I don't know. How can Katrina be a postwoman? She's too posh to be a postwoman. She does a bit on the side of every bit of everything, you know. Oh, <laughs> These posh girls. And what have we got for next then? Vis- Vision quick, is it? How do you say that? Vis- oh, Vision quick. Vision quick. Vision quick. Vision quick. Right. That's Vin- that, I think that's Vinnie Gerrard's. Now, have you only picked that because it, it reminds you of Stephen Gerrard who used to play for Liverpool? No, I just like the name. Oh, Vision <laughs> or quick? Oh, quick. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> get, good, then, get the beers in quick. Oh, okay. And after that, I've got Nimrod. Nimrod. Nimrod, yeah. I think well, what have we got for that one for? Uh, was that it? a missile or something? Oh, it was, it was. I don't think it is anymore, is it? Uh-huh. I don't know what it is. So, is it, um... and, and the final one for me is Pearl Jam. Um, apparently, it likes Ascot. That's about it, apparently. And that's good enough for me, because that... I like Ascot. I like here. I like the beers flowing, the Prosecco's. Caitlin, get up. Get your hand. Get... She's, lost, she's lost her handbag again. <laughs> So you don't go for Pearl Jam because you're a bit of a closet rocker and you're like, oh, Pearl Jam music and yeah, all that sort of stuff. Yeah, but that's a big secret between you and me, Martin. Don't oh, tell anyone okay. else. Yeah, I won't tell anybody about that then. Okay, so there you go. So what have you got plans for the day then? Lots of drinking and lots of teetering about and Definitely winding people drinking. up. Definitely still got to find Rebecca. Where? See if you can find Rebecca. You're not going to be like chucking, chucking food around and... No, misbehaving we don't do and well behaved and stuff. No, Katrina keeps me under wraps there. She okay. looks after me. Do you think you'll get in the um think you'll get in the royal enclosure or do you need a skirt extender to get in? Um no, I'm I'm good.
covered. I'm covered, pretty covered. Okay, you'll be alright then. So you're not going to get sunburned, so that'll be good. So are you coming back tomorrow to give us some a few Definitely, more tips? Definitely, yeah. Okay. I think I'll have Katrina come back tomorrow. We'll speak to you all, particularly right. you and Katrina. Thanks very if you can much, find Rebecca, It's been good talking. We'll speak to you again tomorrow. Waiter, and, uh, waiter. Oh, there we go, that's about it for today then. I hope that's got you in the mood for the racing, which is due to start shortly. And we'll be back tomorrow with more insights as to what we think is going to go on and what we think is going to win. Doug will actually make it, I'm sure, tomorrow. And we'll be in on that chat. Also, we've got the Queen's Hat stakes tomorrow. We'll be running a book on what kind of hat the Queen's going to have on for tomorrow's racing. Plus, we'll be joined by a new fashion expert who's going to take a look at the attire worn by us commentators and give us some tips into how to make ourselves look a little bit more presentable, maybe. And no doubt there'll be plenty of other stories and shenanigans going on throughout the day. So I hope everybody has a good day, plenty of winners, and settle back now and enjoy the racing.